So yeah, I think it will look... Blah, 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 blah. Hey everybody, looks into here. Welcome back to the Lou. Today we are going to play with the gel press again, the gel plate, as well as a drawing of a snail. Actually, a couple snails. Have some paper and the, um, the heart of the matter, <laughs> which are these pens that you've probably all seen. If I had known about these when I was a kid, this is what I would have written everything with. But these are basically called outline pens. If you draw, this is green, you get a green outline around a silver interior. <laughs> because I make silly purchases based on things I would have loved to play with as a kid, I got a pack of these. <laughs> and it comes, actually, I have, think I have two packs of them because of, I ordered some off AliExpress and then a while later, uh, Woody's Goodies started carrying these. A different brand, but the same basic idea, these outline pens. So I bought a pack of theirs as well because why wouldn't I, right? I need so many of these. <laughs> but they come in a whole bunch of colors. And I think they're really cool because that's the silly kind of girl I am. And I wanted to try a few here to show you more of the effect. So if you've already played with these, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And you don't need me to show you. But these are the kind that you have to shake them to prime them and then pump the tip to get it to come out. And then you get this one is purple. This one is a darker blue, maybe a royal blue. It's a blue. <laughs> okay, well, in that case, let's see what this one is. More like an aqua blue or a teal. Sort of brings us to today's video. Okay, so there's a teal blue version. So what's today's video. Well, today's video is me trying to see if these will work on a gel plate. And complete transparency here. I've already given it a tiny bit of a try. If you look at this corner here of my gel plate. For those of you who are new, my gel plate is as stained as it is because I use it a lot and alcohol inks will stain gel plates. I've done quite a few alcohol ink things here, but what I wanted to show you was right here this is me attempting to do a little test of the green one. And I don't know if you can see it. There is no green outline. So what happens when you use these on paper is completely different than what happens when you use these on a gel plate. Don't know why, don't understand the chemistry of it, but that's what happened. So in spite of that, I'm gonna go ahead with today's project, which is we are going to copy through the gel plate another one of my snail drawings here. So we are going to have a play with these on the gel plate, let it dry, see if we can do a pull and get it to come off on some paper. And um, let's see how it looks. We'll use brown, that makes a certain amount of sense. And the two blues, how about that? That's plenty. Okay, pull this over here. See if I can get this to look remotely like some sort of bizarro snail. I mean, it is pulling the color. I am getting the color of the marker. It just isn't really separating out. Art doesn't have to make sense to everybody. It doesn't have to follow, I don't know, rules of chemistry and rules of biology and rules of physics if you don't want it to. Well, that started to separate out. Did you see that? That was the dark blue. The two eye stalks, antenna, tentacles, they're called. So there is some color silver separation going on here. Not a whole lot, but some. Okay, 
So now what happens is we let it dry. I will put a, a very thin layer of acrylic paint over the top and we will, we will do this. Now we will put some paper on it, take a pull, take a press, however you want to say that. See if we get this to come off with the paint. That's what we're going to see. So be right back. Hey, we're back. Okay, this has dried. And now I, I was torn between doing a white paint on top to pull with or a black. I'm going to go with the black just because these are such pretty metallics and I think it'll be really striking if we can get it off. It'll show up on black. You see, I'm not filled with a ton of confidence here, but you know, if it works, it'll look great. <laughs> so I have some plain old copy paper. Put everything else off to the side. And now the key here is to put very little you want. So she puts a big, big old blob. Yeah, we want just, just a little bit. I mean, it's got to cover the whole thing, but with a very thin layer. So now the brayer comes into play and we use the brayer to spread everything out as thinly as possible. Now, because this is some sort of paint, I guess, or a marker substance, it is not reactivated by the paint that I'm putting on now which is good, that would make it kind of messy. That's like when I do um, brush o crystals on here and then I put any sort of acrylic paint on it, the acrylic paint is wet, obviously, therefore the brush o crystals get reactivated. And that just sort of messes everything up because I, I, I end up mixing it with the paint as I'm doing this brayering thing. And I'm, I'm taking excess paint off. I really just want a thin layer and the idea of the paint is to bond with the paper and the marker that I just put on the gel plate. And that's how we're going to theoretically get <laughs> um, the whole thing to come off on the paper. So let's give it a try. Brush your fingers, gang. I'll start by running my hands over this whole thing and pressing down, but I think I'll probably also use the brayer just to make sure I get good pressure everywhere. So we really want to make sure the paint all comes up and pulls the marker with it. does seem to be working somewhat. Yeah. I may have put on such a thin layer of the black that now it's <laughs> not all going to come up. Oh, that's a shame. Well, we're getting some of it. Cool. Okay, so other than a few spots down here, which I, I can't explain, obviously that got too thin and dried too quickly, but in general, that looks really cool. <laughs> what would you do with this? I don't know. I would try and do a better pull and then, but I think, I think it all came off. I don't think there's anything left on here to do another, a second pull with, so. We would put more on and then whichever background acrylic paint color you choose next time, just make sure you don't get it quite as thin as I did. It's a learning curve like so many other things. You'll learn how much paint is good, how much paint is too much, how much paint is not enough. I have had better luck doing this black over something dried and pulling it. In fact, I did a chrome cartoon copy of Snoopy and when I pulled that off, I got just the right amount. And if you'll see in this little clip here, it pulled off. It looked gorgeous. N none of this stuff going on. Just color this in. <laughs> Pretend like it's intentional. There, looks completely normal now, right? 
I do like this technique. Obviously, I would have liked it better, but you know that this makes it look sort of vintage-y, sort of retro-y. You could scan this in and turn it into a... This would look cool on a t-shirt, to be completely honest with you. Even with the vintage-y, blotchy, or negative blotchy sort of black background, I think this would look cool on, on a t-shirt. In fact, maybe I'll try and do that. It wouldn't be with these markers, but I can use this artwork and color what's black here in different colors and then put the whole thing onto a black t-shirt. That's actually a possibility. If anybody wants to see me try something like that in a future video, let me know down in the comments. If you have any other ideas you would like to see me try with these, specific outline type of markers. It doesn't have to be with a gel press. It can be just using them on regular paper somehow. Keep in mind, I am not a great artist. So having me try and draw something freehand would probably result in a huge mess, but you know. Mm. Okay, so if you cover one outline up with another outline, you negate both of them. So I have to do that inside the other one. Oh, they smell good. I'm surprised. I didn't think they would, but they do. They smell kind of neat. Not chemically at all. Not like uh, dry erase markers or something. I guess that's so kids can use them. Um, another possibility, and I don't know. I have no idea if this would work or not. So if I drew something with these on watercolor paper, which will not bleed through, it's a very, it's almost cardstock basically. And then I use some alcohol inks to fill in other areas. It might work, it might not, it might just be a mess. That's something else we could try at some point. So let me know what you think. Where would you use this? If you were going to do something with this, what would it be? And please don't say put it in the trash can. <laughs> Please be more inventive than that. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have fun playing today. This is just, this is me being silly with stuff. But half of what I do is because I just want to have a play with things and see what they do. Actually, more than half of what I do is that. So please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. I will see you in the next video. Stay safe until then.